WrestlePod is supported by viewers like you. To support WrestlePod and the other programs on this channel, visit patreon.com slash Beaumont live and direct. live and direct this is WrestlePod welcome back after a little bit of recovery after uh, Wisdom Tooth operation but hopefully back to normal from now on I'm Ian Beaumont good to be back uh, in the WrestlePod uh, today uh, <laughs> today is kind of an example of great minds thinking alike earlier this week actually it was about Tuesday I sat down to uh, compose, I thought, well, let's do a TNA Impact Wrestling list. Because um, I haven't done one for a while. And uh, basically, I thought, okay, what are the best things TNA have ever done? Um, and I sat down and wrote through this list, ready to uh, record it this week. And lo and behold... Steven Larson and Going In Raw have gone and done the same bloody thing, except uh, they've done about what Impact Wrestling has done great recently. I'm looking more at what Impact Wrestling and TNA did great in the past. Um, now, I've come up with 12, and I couldn't kind of ch chunk it down to a nice round even 10, so I stuck with 12. Uh, so... With all that being said, I know it is very fashionable to kind of do down on Impact Wrestling because they have had some pretty bad moments in the past. Silent storyline. Um, but uh, <laughs> let's not think that everything they did back then was bad. Um, because, you know, going all the way back, they've done some really, really good stuff. And it's not just been the wrestling. It's been a lot of things around the wrestling that has actually uh, s helped sell uh, TNA uh, and Impact Wrestling really well. So, here are the 12 very best things that TNA Impact Wrestling ever did. Number 12, the Fox Box and Time Limits. Now, this was a thing back in the very early days of uh, Impact as a show uh, when they were on Fox Sportsnet uh, back in 2004, 2004, 2005, I think. Uh, very much uh, because it was a one hour show at that time uh, they didn't have a lot of time to develop stuff so and Fox kind of um, had this thing where you had to have the Fox box at the top of the screen to um, show the match what was going on the scores and that sort of thing um, that was fine uh, but I mean, it really, owned, it was sort of a little bit, it was okay, it was It was good, It perhaps it was a little bit too much, but um, not badly so, and you could do with something similar now, uh, but perhaps the bigger deal uh, for me was the fact that those early matches uh, in uh, in the Impact Zone in that first year had very specific time limits. Uh, Non-title matches would be given 10 minutes. 
Title matches would be given 30 minutes, and occasionally a main event would get 15 minutes as a as a thing in storyline. So you'd occasionally get like a 15 minute main event sort of thing. That was quite good. I I quite I quite like that. So yeah, it it works really well. And the, the other thing that that particular incarnation of Impact had that I really liked. And I understand why it was dropped um, later on. But I did like the fact you had two ramps from each side coming down to the ring. And the combatants, one were coming from one side, one were coming from the other. And uh, you'd have one come in first, the other one followed down later from the other side. And that actually was quite good. I like that, that... The opponents came in, or the opposing teams came in from different sides. That, I thought, worked really, really well. I'm a little disappointed nobody's ever done something similar. It's all just one ramp uh, these days. Uh, Which is a shame, because actually that two ramp um, opposing sides deal... Uh, yeah, yeah, it was opposing sides of the six-sided ring, and I was never a big fan of the six-sided ring. A little too gimmicky. But it kind of worked back then, uh, and kind of worked pretty well, actually. That whole look of impact in on Fox Sportsnet from 2004 and 2005 actually worked really well. Number 11, the gut check challenge this was something in the the often hated um hogan bischoff era of uh, impact wrestling and i think i'm gonna be blunt here i think a lot of people just hate on that era because they don't like Eric Bischoff or Hulk Hogan. I think it's as simple as that. Uh, they hate on that era. And actually, there were a lot of good things happening in that time. Yes, it was a little bit... You know, the, you had Brooke Hogan running the knockouts division. And Brooke wasn't that great of a, a performer... But at the same time, having somebody in charge of the Knockouts division as a separate entity was a fine idea. Um, We'll get to that in a bit more detail later on. Um, But the Gut Check Challenge was a way... Because at this time, they had a relationship with OVW, uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling. And... um, Superstars from OVW would come up to um, Impact once a month and participate in this gut check challenge to uh, see if they could get a contract. It would be done in front of judges. The judges wouldn't score the match, but they would uh, vote on whether the... um, the wrestler concerned would get a, a contract. I think it was a one-year contract that was offered. And uh, I kind of like that. That was kind of nice to see people uh, that you didn't normally see on Impact kind of step up, face um, a veteran. They'd very rarely, if ever, get the win, but that was not the point. The point was, how did, how were they in terms of ring performance? How were they in terms of uh, action in the ring? And uh, if I remember correctly, Bruce Pritchard was one of the judges. Um, there were a couple of others as well. But um, the gut check challenge actually... Worked very well as a way of introducing new talent into uh, the promotion. They could make a whole show. Yeah, kind of like an NXT uh, thing, but call it Gut Check. 
and you know have um have it be like a one hour show it could still be done um don't think it's gonna be but i'd quite like to see that actually number 10 the open fight night uh, for a while, this was like a monthly deal. Once a month, Impact Wrestling would become Open Fight Night. And whatever feuds were going on, you didn't necessarily have them continue. Some did. Um, but sometimes you'd get... Uh, uh, basically, a, a new feud starting up through the Open Fight Night. Or you'd get... Um, just matches you wouldn't normally get to see kind of as, you know a little bit of an exhibition match just somebody would come out to the ring make a challenge the person uh, you know that was challenged had to come out they couldn't refuse it they had to come out and, and take part and you got some great matches that way uh, occasionally you'd get a feud continuing, uh, also occasionally you'd actually get, um, a feud starting that way, but more often than not, it was kind of like exhibition matches that you just wouldn't see any other way, and whilst once a month was a little too much, you could certainly have it as a yearly special episode of Impact Wrestling, uh, a lot of the special episodes now are kind of... Um, pay-per-view replacements and I'm not sure that's a good idea I really wasn't sure about it in what was it, about 2013 they started doing this um, wasn't overly keen on it then uh, but actually mostly at the moment things seem to work out uh, you do get some gr some good matches like just recently at uh, Under Pressure, which was a, a special episode of Impact Wrestling. Uh, that women's match between Sue Young and Ali. Oh my god. That was a, a whole nother level. Um, I really like that. But um, I wouldn't do kind of this pay-per-view on... Um, Impact on the Impact show. What I would like to see are a few, uh, let's say, three or four regular um, special episodes. An open fight night is definitely one of those. Um, it, it kind of makes for a nice break from the, the usual storyline stuff. It actually kind of really works uh, as, a, as a format, as a concept. So, yeah. Open fight night once a year. How about it, Impact Wrestling? Number nine. The Explosion Championship Challenge. This was a thing back in, I think it was about 2009, 2010, memory serves. Late 2009. Um, where, and it was only done on Explosion, hence why it was called the Explosion Championship Challenge. Uh, these matches, uh, this tournament happened entirely on Explosion. It was quite a good thing to see, actually. Man, this was back when Explosion was actually a kind of a decent show instead of somewhat of an overflow show fulfilling, like, four different roles at once, which is what it does now. It, it's, it really needs to go back to being a proper B-show uh, for Impact Wrestling. Um, but yeah, the, the champion, the cha this championship challenge was a proper tournament, one fall, and the winner at the end got um, a title match of their choice. They could choose to go after the World Championship if they wanted, but they could also choose to go after the X Division Championship or the Tag Team Championship. It was up to them. Um, I really like the concept. I like the idea of this um, not being like 
guaranteed world title shot. No, guaranteed title shot, but for any of the the, the titles. Uh, I kind of like the... Uh, I, it didn't make the list, but the Feast and Fired briefcases also work quite well in that sense, because you you've got three different title shots in three of the four briefcases, and the last ones are fired. <laughs> you know, it, it, it kind of works, but it's, um, it's always safe for when somebody's leaving the company. So you always know that somebody is on their way out when that uh, feast of fire. It's not a yearly thing. It just pops up when it needs to. And uh, you usually know, oh, such and such person will be leaving the company on this match. Uh, but yeah, I, that's why it doesn't quite make the list uh, of uh, the 12 best things. But it's still pretty good. Um, yes, I know it's pretty much a, a straight, um, borrow from Money in the Bank, but is actually, I think, an improvement on it. Uh, but yeah, the Explosion Championship Challenge was quite a good thing. I'd actually like to see that happen once a year on Explosion as well, have this little tournament, and, uh, I'd actually like to see Explosion, as I said, I'd... I'd like to see Explosion become a proper B show. Only one hour, that's all you need. Uh, but you can have like three or four matches in that time. You can um, probably have, yeah, let's say you have an X Division focus on that. So uh, the X Division Championship can be defended on Explosion. Um, you would probably all. I, I, there's a few others, I, there's an, a couple of other titles that could be defended on there, one of which I will talk about later. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I really would like to see Explosion become uh, more of a B-show, and proper B-show, and less of an overflow show, uh, which is kind of what both Explosion for impact a main event for WWE kind of are now the overflow rather than actual proper undercard shows or, or mid card shows number eight this one's going to be controversial I think the impact grand championship yeah, ho oh, oh. ho, have I just stirred up a hornet's nest, or what? A lot, oh, this one's very divisive amongst uh, the fandom. I know a lot of people don't like the rounds format, don't really care for the matches, don't care about the championship at all. I absolutely love it. I grew up on British wrestling. Uh, back in the day, everything was rounds. It was six five-minute rounds, eight three-minute rounds, whatever. Uh, two falls, two submissions, and a knockout. We'll decide the winner. So, yeah, I was kind of, um... I was kind of, uh... brought up on that form of, of, of wrestling. And, uh, I really kind of like that style and the grand championship was a nice variation on that you had um in between the rounds the judges would uh obviously mark their cards uh the ring announcer would would gather up those cards and would announce the winner of the round between the rounds which I actually like. That's better than what boxing does, where you have got no idea what the score is <laughs> uh, at any point until right at the end, if they get to the the end of the 12 or however many rounds it is, um, without a knockout. So, yeah, I, I can't... I, I really like that. Um... Granted, it's always been fairly samey. Uh, one person wins one ra round one, the other wins round two, and then whoever ends up winning will win round three. So 
some so the stories will either be comes from behind to win or is you know starts in the lead and then wins after uh you know so I, I, I kind of like that. They've never done a straight two rounds. Um, or even a three to nil. Um, which I would... You know, I, that, that kind of story would be kind of interesting to see. Because you, now you're saying... Okay, somebody has won two rounds... They will win unless the other person pins or makes their opponent submit. And in that three-minute round, oh boy, you could then ratchet up the action uh, practically to 11. And, it, it, you know, I like the, the storytelling potential there to have somebody maybe really come from behind to uh, get a get a pinfall victory or submission in the, in the last few seconds. That'd be a great story to tell in that match. Um, but you don't get that. And uh, I, I do think they've kind of um, dropped the ball a little bit on uh, the Grand Championship, uh, which is a shame, because actually, uh, I do really like that that championship that match format i think it works very very well indeed number seven the tna television championship now this was the championship um back in about 2010 i think uh, originally, it had been called the TNA Legends Championship when it had been introduced by Booker T. Um, then it got rebranded as the TNA Global Championship, which I never quite understood. You had the TNA World Heavyweight Championship and the TNA Global Championship. It didn't work, that one. Where it became the TNA Television Championship... That's when it was actually used well and, and the format. Because the idea was the television championship would be defended every week. Uh, so you were guaranteed one title match every week on Impact. And you could do the same now, except you could have it on, uh, on Impact or Explosion. And I'd actually like to see that done and have, you know, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the, the TNA Television Championship become seen as often on Explosion as it is on Impact. And uh, that would be quite a nice thing. So, yeah, I'm, I'd, I'd want them to bring it back, to bring the Television Championship back. Make it a, a, a new belt, not that old, that old red one. That didn't look good. I didn't like the belt, but the championship itself, the, you know, the matches and uh, the format, I think worked brilliantly. So, yeah, bring back the television championship, please. Number six, Global Impact. This was a thing, I think it was 2006. I want to say, I'm not, I, I can't remember offhand, but it, it was a thing where uh, TNA and New Japan uh, fought against each other, I think it was at the time, uh, in a series of matches, one night on Impact Wrestling for, I think it was two hours, I think it was an extended edition of Impact at the time because I think at that time Impact was still only one hour and this was a two hour event uh, but Global Impact was um, quite good it was one of these um, ways of getting uh, international stars into uh, the Impact Zone and have them face off against uh, various TNA wrestlers and I love the format. 
it is another one of those um, uh, ideas that could be re-brought back once a year as uh, a special episode, uh, a yearly special episode of Impact, call it Global Impact, again. And they they, they have um, uh, arrangements with AAA right now. Uh, I think they have an arrangement with one of the Jap Japanese um, wrestling companies. I can't remember which one. But Global Impact would be a way of getting all of these people together in one, um, in one event yearly. And man, I think it would really really help uh cuz uh impact does need um some uh, you know maybe uh, only about as many as four special episodes per year just to keep it on a uh, uh, on a I would say a different level to Raw and Smackdown that don't really have special episodes as such so, um, be not, as I say, Open Fight Night is one, uh, Global Impact is another. I dare say I could probably go through the archives of TNA and come up with a couple of others that would be good. Um, but those are two that very definitely, Open Fight Night and Global Impact are two that very definitely should be. Uh, special episodes of Impact on a yearly basis. Number five. One night only. This came back in 2013 because uh, they were not making enough money from uh, the monthly live pay-per-views to keep justifying them. So they switched to a new model where they only had, I think it was about two or three live pay-per-views that year. May have been four. And um, the the rest were taped um, special events under the One Night Only banner. And here was the thing about One Night Only. Um back then that made it work so well, which is less of a, a thing now. One Night Only featured some very special events with very special stipulations. So you had rivals, where, where old rivalries would get um, brought back for One Night Only. Uh, you had Knockouts Knockdown, which was an entirely all-female-led pay-per-view. Which, um, let's be honest, WWE have never done anything like that. So, you know, kudos, you know, I'd like to see Knockouts Knocked Down uh, as a one night only again. Um, I'd also like to see uh, Joker's Wild come back. What that was, it was a hell of a format and it worked quite well. You would, um, have these wrestlers, um, however many, 24, 32, pair up in random tag teams that would be drawn. So each one would be drawn, and, and those two would go into a match against another pair of randomly drawn, and they'd have to team up to win their qualifying match. Whichever pair win would go into the Joker's Wild Battle Royal at the end, uh, where it was every man for themselves, and you'd win, like, I think it was about $100,000, kayfabe. Uh, that was quite, I, I like that. I really like that. There's been, there's been several really great, um, events done that way, in the one night only format. Recent years, they kind of made it like pre-recorded, proper paper, you know, uh, just recorded versions of normal uh, Impact Wrestling pay-per-views, and I'm not that, I'm not that keen on the new format. The original format was a lot better. 
You should go back to that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, one night only. Really good in the past. Not so good now. But I liked it so much in the past that I want to see it go back there. And, and do those sorts of one night. There were literally one night special events. Everything happened in the night. So you'd have a tournament in a night. Um, and it was a whole... It it was it was just a great idea, rather than just a a, a, a standard name for pre-recorded pay-per-view events. Number four, the X Cup and the World X Cup. These are basically the same thing. Uh, just one featured only Impact uh, TNA wrestlers; the other featured wrestlers from all over the globe. Uh, various promotions would have teams represented in there, so you'd have, so you'd have uh, Team Canada, Team Mexico, Team Japan, Team International, um, and that would be, and that was quite on Team America, of course, and that would be a thing. I really like the, um, I really like those those tournaments uh, because they. They were different to anything else going on in WWE. Even different to anything going on in many of the independents at that time. There was nothing quite like this around. And that was really, really good. So, yeah. I would want to see this come back. And I, again, I'd, I'd want to see it done. Uh... Probably as a one night only event, or maybe as a, a a month long tournament, in the midst of whatever other stories are going on on Impact and Explosion. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to see that happen. So we're getting towards the top three. Number three, the Bound for Glory series. This was around in the much maligned uh, Hogan Bischoff era, if I remember correctly. Uh, but it was actually one of the better things they were doing then. It was like, um, it would start just after Slammiversary. It would go up to Bound for Glory. And uh, it would uh, basically be a tournament to find a new number one contender for... Uh, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship at Bound for Glory. And as I'm, they had time limits as well. I think the time limit was 15 minutes for uh, Bound for Glory series matches. And uh, whatever your result, you would score points. Uh... The, the 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 kind of the interesting thing about the Bound for Glory series was you would score ten points for a submission victory, but only seven points for a pinfall. Um, I uh, if I let me see if I can remember this correctly. I think it was five for a victory by countout. Three for a victory by disqualification. Two points for a time limit draw. And if you were the one disqualified, you'd lost ten points. Which I have to admit, I I, I, I love that idea. If you, you, know, you lost ten points if you were disqualified in a Bound for Glory series match. Which um, did happen sometimes. You had the occasional time limit draw... You had the occasional um, countout victory or or, or, you, uh, or disqualification, but most were either pinfall or submission. And I, uh, the whole format worked really well. It was it was it was a basic league. You'd have eight to twelve wrestlers, and they'd all face each other in various matches. Um, I would go so far, and I think it, it would either start or end with a battle royal 
um, where you would get t uh, double points if you if you uh, won. Uh, so it was like a twenty point battle royal sort of thing. So twenty points were available if you won battle royal, which could uh, you know either bring someone. Uh, up from like fourth place to being the winner, uh, or the eventual winner could be like way out in front uh, as a result. But I, I, I actually love that format. I, I, I love the Bound for Glory series, and I think it worked amazingly well. Number two, the TNA Knockouts Division. I. <laughs> You were, you're saying, okay, why are you putting an entire division on there? It's because they were doing women's wrestling and doing it properly long before WWE were. And you'll say, well, hang on a minute. 2004, you had Lita and Trish Stratus main eventing Raw. The knockouts division didn't come in until 2007. You're quite right. But at that time, the women's division in, in WWE really wasn't being taken seriously. They were about the only two competitors. Uh, and then maybe Mickey James as well after that. That were, you know, proper serious athletes um, in that sense. The rest of the division were um, populated by models who were just looking good. It didn't really work. Uh, so you had in 2017, and I actually create their own uh, female division. They would call it the Knockouts Division, and they and uh, created a Knockouts Championship. Gail Kim was the first winner, and uh, is one of the few to have ever won the WWE Women's Championship. And also the TNA Knockouts Championship. Mickey James did as well. But I'm not sure many others did. Um, I'd have to look that one up. But uh, basically you had um, these knockouts matches were so much better than anything WWE were putting on at the time. Like... A hundred, two hundred percent better, or more. That's how. That's how bad WWE's product was at the time, and really, um, WWE have been playing catch up ever since, and they're now getting to the point where they're actually treating women's wrestling as a proper serious thing now, but. You know, you've been doing that since 2007. And number one. Oh, before I get to number one. Of course, the Knockouts Division have had their own pay-per-views. The women have, uh, of WWE haven't had that yet. Think on that as well. Yes, they main evented pay-per-views, but they've not been the entirety of a pay-per-view. Not yet. I wonder if WWE would ever do that. Hmm. Number one. The TNA X Division. Look, the X Division uh, really, in that sense, was the successor to WCW's Cruiserweight Division. The Cruiserweight Division in WCW was... Um, Really about the in-ring action. And uh, WWE ha was kind of um, running the cruiserweight division at that time. Um, but it was kind of, I want to say gimmicky, because that's, like, that's not quite right. But it was... It was often treated as uh, like um, 
what I would call a concession stand match. You could take a break and go to the concession stand and not really say you'd miss much. Um, but the X Division was so much more than what WWE were doing with their cruiserweights at the time. Uh, because, as they used to say, it wasn't about weight limits. It was about no limits. And no limits literally was the thing. I mean, Samoa Joe is X-Division champion, and he's no cruiserweight. So, I mean, that, I mean, that proves that, you know, it was about... It was about a wrestling style, rather than, um... A weight limit. And, I mean, they, they, they played around with that X Division a few times in the past. Introduced the weight limit, quietly dropped it again. Made all the matches triple threat, quietly dropped that as well. Um, but, um, you know what? The X Division still, even to this day, is one of the best things TNA Impact Wrestling has ever done, will ever do. It's so much better than um, their world title scene. That honestly, uh, I mean, again, they've they've done whole pay per views uh, based upon the X Division concept. Destination X was one. The extravaganza uh, from One Night Only was another. Uh, and, and these, were, you know, in their original incarnations were X Division focused pay per views. Uh, I mean, it, the X Division really does, is one of the things that helped define TNA in the early going. It is still one of the better things, still one of the best things, it's still the best thing they do. Right now. And, uh... I just worry that, uh... If TNA ever did away with the X Division... It would be probably their death now. Because, um... The X Division made TNA. And I think as long as they have the X Division championship there... And as long as they treat it... Not as a mid-card title, but as a comparable top-level championship. I won't say world championship, but let's say a top-level championship. Then it will always feel like a big thing in Impact Wrestling. And they need to keep that X Division flame burning. Uh, to keep Impact Wrestling going. And that, that that is my feeling. So there you go. The 12 best things TNA Impact Wrestling ever did. Anything I missed out? Anything you thought didn't belong on that list? I'm probably thinking the Grand Championship might be for some of you. But uh, whatever your thoughts, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Like, share, subscribe, uh, follow us on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash WrestlePod, I-B-L-N-D. Uh, you can, uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, where this video goes up as well as on YouTube, uh, you can uh, subscribe on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash C slash Ian Bromont 128 that's where you will find this channel if you're watching us on Facebook. So give us a subscribe over on YouTube as well. Um, follow us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ian Beaumont Live and Direct. Uh, going to be starting some new viewpoints soon, which are not going to be news-based. I'm going to um, key off stories that are happening, but they're going to be a little more pop culture rather than um, uh, news. So uh, keep an eye out for those. 
Uh, and uh, until next time, thank you very much for watching. Stay sharp. Stay tuned.